Bishop, thank you so much for inviting me for this breakfast as we, <laughs> <laughs> as we get started for the service. And uh, welcome back to CBS as well. Wow, thank you. Amen. Right? Amen. Looks like the last time I was here, I didn't do a very good job. Oh. <laughs> so it's taken a while, a to, while bring to bring me back. You back. <laughs> no, we're but delighted thank you, to thank you. Yeah. It's a joy to have you back. <laughs> I know to, we're, we're dealing with this issue of excellence, uh, radiant excellence or radiating uh, God's excellence uh, in, in the subject of the service today. And um, I, I, the late Miles Monroe once said that uh, all of us are born originals, but we die copies. We, we, we don't allow our originality to come forth. And so we end up doing what other people are doing. Why do you think it is that we tend to settle for mediocrity? What is it about mediocrity that attracts us? I don't know that mediocrity really attracts. Um, but it is easy. Mm. It is easy. Mm. You don't have to put effort to sure. produce a mediocre job, mm. Mm. Uh, mediocre product. You, you, the, it, it's cheap, it's mm. easy, mm. and uh, gives you quick returns. Yeah. Yeah. Excellence requires effort. Mm. You know, mm. you, you have to put in some effort. Mm. And that's what many of us find difficult. So we settle for, for less. You know, for for uh, Kipchoge, yes. who who's run yes, twenty really, minutes, is it? it? Well, no, just Less under than, two hours. Yeah. Under two hours, yeah. yes. Uh, he had to work hard. Yes, <laughs> he yes, had to work hard. Yes, yep, yep. to get there. Amen. And Amen. It, all these people who win True. medals yes. and uh, and things in mm. whichever field. Yes. It's hard work. It's hard work. It's true. and it is that mm. hard work that many of us Amen. Amen. don't want to put in. Yeah. Yeah. So we settle for mediocre. Mm. I don't think that yeah. we love mediocre mm. because that same person who is giving you a mediocre service, ah, true. when they go to look for service That's themselves, true. they yeah, want something true. excellent. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. Yeah, that yeah. is so true. Amen. We're looking forward to the service. Uh, I know um, in a short while the, the worship team will lead us. The, our moderator today is Nigel DeMello. Um, but just as we prepare to join them after this, uh, this light breakfast, <laughs> And thank you for the breakfast. Oh, Karibu yes. Sana. Is, is, there, is, is there something that you, you would say, especially to our visitors who are joining us from around the world, and uh, something that gives them a foretaste of what to expect in the service today? Um, I want to say welcome to every person who is um, listening and attending this service with us today. Our, our topic today is Radiant Excellence. And we are talking about how we can radiate mm. God's glory through the work that we do. And I believe that when uh, we put effort in doing a good job, Amen. we reflect the glory of God. And that's what we are going to be talking about. How can you do this? Why is it important? Amen. And uh, how does it honor God? Uh, I, I want to welcome you from wherever you are. Join us in this uh, service today. And I believe that by the end of it, at least we'll have learned something uh, small or big on how we can do our work with excellence. Welcome. Amen. A very warm welcome to you to this CBS family service today. Swagate, as we say in Hindi. We are always looking forward to you joining us for this special time of worship and the word. My name is Nigel DeMello, and I will be serving as your moderator for the day. We have an amazing worship service lined up for you. And after the praise and worship service time, we will have our very own Bishop Emeritus II, the Reverend Dr. David Oginde, come and speak to us. He is no stranger here at CBS, and we'll be delighted to welcome him back. We welcome those of you who are joining us and listening on Hope FM those that are watching us on Hope TV and all our Sitem Church online uh, stations. 
every Sunday. Our hashtag for today is Radiant Excellence, but more about that after the service. As always, let's get started. And as you help me welcome this anointed worship team to lead us into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody just celebrate the King of Glory. That is not enough. Come on, shout. Hey. Your name is a strong tower. Jesus, to you belongs all power. Jesus, to 
great. You do mighty things, oh Lord. You're highly lifted up. Jehovah, you reign. You rule. Oh, Jehovah, King of glory. King of kings. Lord of lords. We worship you, Jesus, today. There is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. We give you praise and glory. You deserve it all. Jesus, we give you praise. Your name is great. You alone are worthy. You alone sit on the throne. Oh, Jehovah, King of glory, we worship you. With everything that is within us, so oh Lord. We worship you, Lord. sings my soul my Savior God to thee oh Lord how great thou art how great Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art! 
just honor him there and worship him. Like you, Jesus. Oh, you alone are worthy, oh God. There is none like you. Oh, you're stronger than the strong. You're greater than the greatest, oh God. You're an amazing God. We praise you.
Father, that's the confession of our hearts today because all the gods in the world, they are the makings of humankind. It is only you, the most excellent, the most amazing one who has revealed yourself to us. And we worship you today in spirit and in truth, knowing that you are the true living God, the God of heaven and earth. And we love you. We lay down our lives before you, Father God. We honor you and we give you thanks and praise for who you are to us, almighty Father. We lift up your name. We thank you, Lord, that your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. So even as we worship, as we worship, you are here with us. And may you receive our praises, O God, as a sweet smelling aroma, as an incense to you, O Father. We lift up your holy name. We give you honor and we give you thanks and praise. For it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray in faith believing. Amen and amen and amen. We thank you so much, wonderful worship team, for being here and ministering to us. Dear brothers and sisters, if you were blessed by this worship, that was nothing short of excellence. I would like to encourage you to drop us a chat. Shout out to us on Facebook or in Twitter in the chat level in the chat area. God bless you. Thank you so very much. We especially want to welcome our friends joining the broadcast from Namibia, America, Romania, and East Timor. We mention these countries specifically because we have growing ministry presence in these countries. But of course, as always, you are welcome from whichever part of the world that you are in. We are delighted to have you with us today. If you haven't done so before, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell for uh, bell icon for notifications and reminders for the future videos. And a reminder for you today, please tweet once again. Our hashtag is Radiant Excellence. Why not engage with us by posting something on Twitter or on Instagram? Just let us know your thoughts and your comments as you worship with us today. We will be bringing on our speaker for the day, the Bishop Emeritus David Oginde, in a short while. And he'll be sharing an amazing lesson the theme on the theme for 2022 at Sitem here, radiating his glory. Now, as we continue, here are some important ministry announcements. So please watch this clip. We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS family service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM or those of you streaming live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on all the Sitem Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before or even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. Planning to get married? We urge all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly to the Ministry of Health guidelines, so please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. 
We express our deepest condolences to all who are bereaved. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to the current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitem Church offices are open between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday to Friday, strictly observing all current Ministry of Health protocols. Please remember that all our assemblies around Kenya are open for in-person services. Seating capacity is limited to not more than two-thirds of the capacity of the sanctuary and all other Ministry of Health protocols still apply. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitam Broadcast Service. Thanks for paying attention to these notices. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. I'd like to take this time to give thanks for the giving of God's people across the world. Please join me as I pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for the giving of your people they're giving their tithes and their offerings, hard-earned money, O Lord God Almighty, for your kingdom, for your service, to see your kingdom here on this earth as it is in heaven. Lord, bless those who are in the position to give. But we also remember those that are struggling financially, Father God. And I pray that you would open doors before them, Almighty Father, that they would also be able to earn and also be able to bring into the storehouse so that your house may be taken care of. Father, glorify your name in our giving. We love you and we worship you. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work even in these trying times. As we seek to bring the spread of the virus under control, we believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. For the easy management of our finances, we have established a common payment platform for all our giving irrespective of which assembly you attend and even for our visitors. You can now give via mobile money through the platforms of M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933-934. I repeat, 933-934. For the account name, please indicate the SITAM assembly you attend. And if you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of SITAM, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all the other SITAM people numbers remain operational. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. The account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, the Bank Cooperative Bank, a University Way branch, account number is 011-280-617-639-00. I repeat, 011-280-617-639-00. The SWIFT code, KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. That is KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.satum.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering, and every generous material support. God bless you. It is now time for the Word of God. And as I mentioned earlier, the preacher of the day is no stranger to the CBS family. Please help me welcome Bishop Emeritus Dr. David Oginde. He is the founder and CEO of The Catalyte, a leadership consultancy and coaching company right here in Kenya. The title of the message is Radiant Excellence, based on the scripture, Philippians chapter 1. And I am convinced that you will have a wonderful time and be blessed by the word of God. Once again, our hashtag is Radiant Excellence. Excellence. Well, thank you, Pastor Nigel, for that uh, welcome and introduction. And indeed, this is a great time that we look forward to sharing from the Word of God. And thank you for joining us uh, this morning as we look at another aspect of radiating 
God's glory. Bring you greetings from my family, my wife, and our Joyce and Chris. We are happy to be here and to serve in this way. Indeed, it has been a while since I was at this pulpit, but I have been thoroughly blessed by the many, many people who have come uh, to speak to us on this theme, starting with our bishop who gave us a powerful uh, introduction to radiating God's glory. And then last week, my goodness, our sister Wairimu, Pastor Wairimu, just blessed me down to my socks. That was a very, very uh, powerful message. And I come behind uh, her to also bring another one. And I pray that God will help us to uh, get something out of this as we seek to radiate God's glory. Uh, for those of you who are joining us, our theme on, in Sitam this year is radiating God's glory. And we are looking at different ways of doing so. And one of the ways we can radiate God's glory is in the quality of work that we do. In the creation story, we find God at uh, the beginning of Genesis uh, working on the creation of the universe. And God made the universe in a span of six days, six short days. Uh, some uh, theologians believe it was six long days. But God created one aspect of the universe every day, beginning with the light on day one, the waters in day two, the land and vegetation on day three, the sun, moon, and the galaxies on day four. Then the animals come in on day five. And then, of course, the epitome of God's creation, the human beings come in on day six. And God completes his creation, and on the seventh day, he took a break. He actually rested. What stands out clearly in this creation story is that this process was very systematic and strategic, carefully thought through and excellently executed. After God finished his work on each of the days, the Bible tells us that he stood back and looked at what he had done and did an evaluation. And every day, the verdict was, and God saw that it was good. That is repeated over and over again. So it's like every day at the end of his job, at the end of his day, he looks back at the end of the day and he says, how did I perform this day? And his verdict is, it was good. I know many of us are familiar with performance evaluations, but they take place one year, you know, at the end of the year. Then now you are given a performance evaluation. You need to evaluate yourself. How did you perform this year? God did his on a daily basis. And I wonder how many of us, if we were to take a daily evaluation of our work, at the end of the day, you are given a performance review, fill in the form and say, how did you do today? How many of us can on a daily basis say, and it was good. But God was fully satisfied with his work on each day that he, he, he did the creation, uh, the creation work. The implication here is that God is a God of excellence. Whatever he does, he does well. When God says something is good, it cannot be made better. He does not mean it is okay. It means it is perfect. It requires no improvement. He has done it and it is done. Moses in uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse number four, he says, he, God, is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. His works are perfect. I don't know that any of us can say that the work that we do is perfect, but Moses says when God does a work, he does it perfectly. So Moses here brings to us the attribute of God of excellence and perfection. God's work cannot be improved. And the implication therefore is that if we are to radiate God's glory, 
then everything we do must be done with excellence. That is why our topic today is radiant excellence or radiating God's excellence. How can we do that which God is doing so that in every space where we are as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, as representatives of God, when somebody looks at the work that we have done, even without knowing that we are representatives of God, they can see that there's something about this person and their work that is just special, is excellent. It is when they ask you, why, why do you, how it comes you do this work like this? You say, I am following the footsteps of my father. My father God is a God of excellence, and uh, therefore I also must be a person of excellence. So the question is, how can we demonstrate this radiant excellence in our journey with God? I want to use Paul's example. Uh, it's not about work, but about his life. As given to us in Philippians chapter 3, which uh, many of us are familiar with, he, he goes on all the way to chapter 4. We will not have time to, to read the text, but I just want us to pick out some Three things that Paul talks about that I believe are uh, uh, and a demonstration of how we can radiate God's excellence in what we do. In Philippians chapter 3, uh, from verse 1 to chapter 4, verse number 9, I want to pick <clears throat> three things that for us to radiate God's excellence, we must desire, we must have a desire for the better we must not be satisfied with what we have. There must be a desire for good things. And the key verse that we'll be looking at there is verse number 10 of chapter three. Number two, there must be a dissatisfaction with the good. A dissatisfaction with the good. One would say, you know, when things are good, why, why, why mess them up? If it is not broke, you know, why mess with it? The key verse we'll be looking at is verse number 12 of chapter 3. And then the third one is a determination to achieve the best. Uh, and we will be looking at chapter number 4, and the key verse there will be verse number 1. So let's first start with this desire for the better. In this story, Paul is giving his testimony of where he came from, and he gives his background he traces his lineage from the tribe of Benjamin. He says, I am a Hebrew of Hebrews. He had attained the highest also of the religious ranking of his day. He says, I am a Pharisee. Now, when some people hear that uh, Paul says he was a Pharisee, we, we think very negatively about it. But in those days, for you to, see, to say you are a Pharisee, it means you have got to the top of the top in the, religious, uh, uh, in the religious ranking. So Paul could say with pride, I was a Pharisee. But Paul was later to discover that all the achievements that he had were nothing. There was something greater that than the religious practices that he was engaged in, the education that he had had, the uh, social connections that he had, there was something that was greater than what he already had. And with that discovery, Paul had only one driving force in his life. That was to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. So Paul says in chapter 3, of the of Philippians, verse number seven, I'll read to verse number 11. And this is what he says. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God 
and is by faith. The picture we get here is that Paul was not uh, being prodded or being persuaded or being pushed to be a better Christian after he discovered a relationship with Jesus Christ. It was something that was burning within him. It was something that he wanted and he wanted badly. And I want to say that radiant excellence begins with a thirst for the deeper things of God. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. That he said in Matthew chapter number five and verse number six. You cannot radiate God's excellence without the overwhelming spirit of God. Paul's hunger and thirst drove him to cry out, I want to know Christ. Is it that he did not already know Christ? No, he did, but he wanted to go deeper. He wanted something better. He wanted to walk with God closer. And this is what drove him to want more. And I want to say this. I know this may not sound very relevant to the issue of excellence, but I want to say that a change in our circumstances will only come when we develop an all-consuming desire for something different than we already have. We must desire something better, something greater, something deeper. It is that desire that will drive you to have excellence. When you do a work and you step back like God did and you look at it, can you say it is good? In other words, I'm satisfied that I have done the very best that I could do. Sometimes we get so satisfied with very little. And this is where we get this mediocrity in the things that we do that do not reflect the glory of God. Some people have said that Christians are the most shoddy people. We do a very shoddy work because of this um, saying that God looks on the outside. So I can dress anyhowly, I can walk anyhowly, I can do work anyhowly because what matters is what is on the inside. High class nonsense. When you look at God and how he did the temple and how he got people with great skill to put in the very best that could be done, then you know that God is a God of excellence. When you look at the universe and the way God has put everything together, God is a God of excellence. We cannot therefore say, I am a follower of God. I am a believer in God. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And yet do things in such, you know, shoddily, in a shoddy way. Excellence begins with a desire for better, a desire for greater, a desire for deeper, a desire for something that has not been done. Most innovations come out of that kind of desire. Number two, dissatisfaction with the good. You know, our desires are of no use unless we are dissatisfied with our current state of affairs. We will not take any action unless we feel disturbed by what we have or where we are. Paul tells the Philippians in chapter 3, verse number 12 to 14, and he says this. After he had given his credentials, after he has said, you know, I desire him to know more about Christ, he comes in verse 12 and says this. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Jesus Christ took hold of me. Hallelujah. And verse number 13, he says, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward 
in Christ Jesus. Now, Paul is talking about spiritual matters, and I, I, I am very aware of that. But bring that same principle in the area of work. Bring that same principle in the area of our lives. If you are satisfied with the little that you are doing, you cannot do better. If you are satisfied, you cannot move forward. And despite of all that Paul had already had, there was a dissatisfaction within him that caused him to declare in verse 12, not that I have already obtained. In other words, yes, I have achieved a lot. Yes, I have produced good work. Yes, I have produced a good product. Yes, I have created this thing that looks very nice and everybody's admiring, but I am not settling here. I want to make improvement. I want to make it better. I want to do a better job and make it perfect. And he says, I therefore press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. I remember as a student of architecture uh, many years ago, uh, in the second year, we did a, a, a study called structures, how to, how to put the structures of a building. And we were required to use sticks, you know, uh, to, to build the structure of, of a building. And, and it was a tedious exercise. You would take these pieces of sticks and with glue, wood glue, stick them together. You know, already you have designed your structural system and then you, you put them together and it will take you days sometimes without sleeping. And finally, your structure is there looking good and nice. Then there was a day of presentation. So we would now make a presentation. You explain to the class together with the professor uh, what you have done, why you have done it, and so on. And uh, after you have done your presentation, this, this professor uh, would once in a while would come around with a, with, with a wooden mallet or a, and crush the whole thing. And he said, this cannot stand. And I tell you, thinking of where you have come from, what you have done, the night and the time you have spent on it, you just feel like crying. But what I learned is that what the professor was helping us to do is to do better than the just accomplishing the work. You know, to, to move beyond the ordinary, to think a little deeper. And I have realized that when I am doing something, I try, I don't say I always do it, but I try my best. That the work that I do, I want to go over it again, I want to go over it again, until I get to that place where I can say, in the time that I have, with the resources that I have, with everything that I have, I have done what is best for that situation. Past experiences, whether good or bad, can be great hindrances to the pursuit of new heights of achievement. Positive dissatisfaction is what leads us to pursue the better. Satisfaction with the status quo leads to complacency and stagnation and eventually death. Someone has said the good is the enemy of the best. You cannot change that which you can tolerate. And so one of the greatest enemies to the pursuit of excellence is the feeling of arrival, the feeling of satisfaction with the current situation is a major killer of all ambition and the desire for better things. Many organizations and companies that have been overtaken are those companies and organizations that felt they have uh, uh, invented the best product. They have got the best way of doing service. They have invented the best way of everything. And so they are settled down, they maintain the status quo. Our product, the way it was 10 years ago is the way it is now. We found the right formula. Remember, there is always someone behind you studying your ways and trying to do things in a better way. And before you know it, they have overtaken you. Much of the mediocrity we see in Christian circles today is mainly due to satisfaction with the good instead of pursuing the very best. Number three, determination to achieve the best. Paul says in Philippians chapter three, 
verse 15. All of us, that includes you and I, who are mature should take such a view of things. Which view? That he has described. That all of us should desire more. All of us should not have this arrival mentality. All of us should be pursuing and pressing on towards better things. It takes sheer determination to go for excellence. Whether in spiritual or material success, one must make up their own minds that they are going to pursue excellence. Why? Because Paul says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 and 20 to 25, Whatever you do, and mark if you want to underline a word, underline the word whatever. Underline the word whatever. That means in everything that you do, work at it with all your heart. As working for the Lord, not for men. That means it is not just in church, it is not just in spiritual things, but in your office, Everything that you do, do it as unto the Lord. And in that way, you radiate the glory of God in your work. Men and women in the civil service who know God, radiate God's glory in that civil service and bring a change and transformation. You who are in the corporate sector, do something. You are in the professions. Whether you are an engineer, a doctor, uh, uh, whatever it is that you are, Use your profession to radiate God's glory. And he says in verse 24, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, because it is the Lord Christ that you are serving. Paul is saying here that God expects that in whatever we do, that we give him the very best. Whereas our best may not always meet other people's standards, but we must, however, satisfy ourselves that we have done our very best. That is a standard that God will use for us. Let me spend the last few minutes in uh, just looking at this thing of excellence. Why the pursuit of excellence? Why should we give ourselves to excellence? It indeed radiates God's glory. And how does that work? Number one, excellence tells us that you respect yourself. That is the first thing. I look at the way you work. I look at the way you dress. I look the way you handle yourself. And it tells me whether you value yourself or you don't. Excellence is an expression of your self-worth. If you give me poor quality work, then you are saying, this is the best I can do. This is who I am. And I was saying, which I say, I believe that the quality of our work is the best signature of our work. If you give me a work, I can tell who the kind of person that you are. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1, which has become my theme verse. A good name is more desirable than riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Ecclesiastes 7 once repeats the same thing and say, a good name is better than fine perfume. In other words, take pride on who you are. Do something that reflects your name. The other day I was speaking to some uh, engineers uh, and, and I was telling them, if there was a sign to be put on the road that you supervised, to say this road was supervised by engineer so and so, would there be a difference in the way that that road is done. Because your name is not labeled there, so sometimes we get away with very shoddy work. Can you put your signature? You know there are people whose names are signatures and when we wear their clothes, we want that name to appear here so that people can know. Calvin Klein. How did they get there? By doing a very good work until their names became their signature. So that when I wear a Calvin Klein uh, shirt or, or, or suit, I even want the label, I don't want to remove it. So people can know. A good name 
is better than fine perfume. Some of you have heard me tell this uh, story. One time I took my car for buffing. It was scratches here and there, and I took it for, uh, for, for buffing. And the man told me, I, I thought it would take just a few minutes. He said, no, I took it in the morning. He said, come in the evening. I said, evening, why, why do you want to take so long? He said, this thing takes time. So I took it there, and uh, in the evening I went. And when I entered the gate, I saw this man, I saw my car, and this guy was apparently still working on it. So he, he would go, and the car was looking amazing. But he would go back, touch a little, step back, look back, look at the car. And I could see a smile. He was all alone, you know. He didn't even know I was seeing him or somebody was seeing him. And a smile breaks on his face. And then he goes back and does, and then he steps back and he looks at it. I stood there and I said, this man loves the work he does. And this man is proud of his work. He smiles when he looks at his work. He's like God saying, it is good. I took a car again to another person. This is a member of our church here called Nick. He does a work that no other person, as far as I know, is doing in this country. He does something called detailed cleaning. So he called me and said, Bishop, bring your car. I want to do something on it. As far as I was concerned, my car was okay. I mean, it was good. It was clean. He said, no, no, no. You bring your car. You will see. So uh, I said, how long will it take? He said, Give, bring it and leave it with me for at least three days. I said, three days to clean a car? He said, yeah, you bring. So we took the car. When we went with my wife to pick this car, my friend, I could not believe that was my car. Inside, outside, everything, the car was done to perfection. It was good as new. I told Nick, what did you do to my car? He just smiled. He said, this is the work we do. This is the work we do. I took to him another car that was beat up, finished. I mean, the paint was finished and everything. I asked him, Nick, can you do this? He said, this is the work we do. You leave it with me. This one, he said, leave it with us for at least five days. When we went to pick that car, my friend, I could not believe it. Not painted, but it looked like it had been repainted. It was shining inside, outside the dashboard. Everything was, mm. I said, Nick, what did you do to this car? These are people who have given themselves to serving God with excellence. Excellence is a mark of who you are. Just remember that. Number two, excellence is respect for others. Excellence is an expression of how you value those people that you serve. If you served me in a very shoddy manner, it is telling me that you don't care about me. I'm not of value to you, you know? Excellence showed me that you value me as your customer, you value me as a person you serve. And I can tell you, people will forget how fast you did a job, but they will never forget how well you did it. Just like I've given you those two examples, I will not forget. In fact, I'm about to take him another car to, for him to do a good job on it. We only have one opportunity to make a first impression. Do the best for your client. Do the best for the person you serve. Whether it is in your personal office, it is in a government office, it is in a church situation, whichever place, whether you are a consultant or you are uh, uh, working for someone, give it your very best. Let it radiate God's excellence. Thirdly, and I need to close, excellence is a commitment to integrity. It's a mark of integrity that you are saying, this person has given me his or her work. This person has taken time to come to me. This person perhaps is paying me for the work that I do. I need to give them value for their money. 
Lack of excellence, shoddiness, is fraud, is robbery. If I'm paying you, you need to give me work that is worth my money or beyond. Shoddy work often has to be repeated. Shoddy goods do not last. Shoddy service does not satisfy. You are robbing us as your clients, as your customers. Mediocrity gets lost and it is easily forgotten, said Antonio Ainario. No one talks about mediocrity. What they talk about is excellence. Excellence provides meaning, it builds on passion, and it generates further passion from both you and your clients. Excellence defines, it differentiates. If you are going to do the work, you might as well go all the way and practice excellence. A quote from Anthony Oinarandio. Excellence takes effort. Quality is never an accident, said John Ruskin. It is always the result of intelligent effort. There must be the will to produce good things. Excellence requires a paradigm shift, a mindset change. And Paul says, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Paul recommends a shift in our perspective. Paul recommends that we change our mindset so that we provide the excellent. Some of you may have heard me quote Martin Luther King Jr., which is the last thing I say. As the black community stood at the brink of a new liberation in the United States of America, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. challenged his fellow blacks not to settle for the mediocre. He told them, concerning their attitude to work, and I quote, we must not seek to do a merely good job, but rather set out to do our lives work so well that the living, the dead, and the unborn could not do it better. If it falls upon your love to be a street sweeper, go out and sweep streets like Michelangelo carved marble. Like sweep streets like Raphael painted pictures, like Beethoven composed music, and like Shakespeare composed poetry. Sweep streets so well that the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lives a great street sweeper who sweeps his job well. If you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a shrub down the valley, but be the very best little shrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you cannot be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it is not by the size that your size that you will win or fail. Be the best of whatever you are. Wow. A man or woman who cannot die for something is not fit. To live, said Martin Luther King Jr. If we can't do a good job, we are not worthy of the work or the life we live. Brothers and sisters, this is the call to us to radiate God's glory through doing a good work. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity this morning. We thank you, Lord, because you have given us the skills, the abilities, and all that we need because we are created in your image. Help us, oh God, to do the very best that we can in every space where we find ourselves. This is your call upon our lives. This is what we commit ourselves to. Before I finish this prayer, you may be here, but you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We said the best place to start this radiation of God's glory is by having Christ in your life and a desire to know him more. I want to pray for you if you 
are in that place where you want Jesus. Just say this prayer with me wherever you are. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I turn my life over to you. Make me a child of God and help me from this day to live for you and to walk with you all the days of my life. Father, every person who has said that prayer, may you, according to your promise, make them the children of God and help them in their journey from now on to the ending of their days. For we pray in Jesus' name. If you have said that prayer, please send us a message on our contacts that you have on the screen and we'll be happy to be in touch with you. God bless you and have an excellent day. Amen. Amen. Amen again. Thank you so much, Bishop. Oh. I, you know, I, I was just blown away by something you said, that a, a sense of arrival is the enemy of excellence. Yes, it is. And, and uh, I, I, it's still ringing in my mind. And I thought to myself, maybe that's where a big problem is for many of us. We feel that, okay, I've accomplished this. I've got this degree or I, I've got this promotion. Uh, or I finally got this job, and we settle for, for that. Maybe a quick parting shot as you go, <laughs> how to avoid a sense of, of arrival. It's, it's a big enemy because mm. you, you, you know, you, you have, like you said, achieved this mm. maybe beyond even your peers. Yes, you know? yes. Uh, when, when you stand among people, you are tall yes. in whatever you do. Right, right. And, and you feel there's no more. Mm. But men and women who produce excellent things mm. go beyond. Hallelujah. I, 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 let me use this illustration sure. in the phone industry. Sure. You, <clears throat> you buy a, a, a phone, mm. this, this uh, new gadget, Samsung iPhone, mm -hmm. you know, the top of the right. end. Yes. And it, it, it blows your mind away. Right. I mean, the, this thing is just excellent. excellent. <laughs> <laughs> True. And so you have got your S something yes. and your S that Some, and your yes. iPhone this, uh -huh. and you thought you have arrived. arrived. <laughs> A year down the road, yes. they say, we have produced another one. <laughs> Very true. And the other one Very is true. beyond yeah. what, yes. You yes. Had. what you had before. These people are not satisfied That's right. with that which mm. they have produced. Mm. It is good. The camera is excellent. Yes. The video, the what. I mean, for ordinary folks like us, wow. this is the ultimate of fonts. <laughs> True. But they are busy working. Yes. Improving. Amen. Making it better. Mm. They have not arrived. Hallelujah. That is the spirit. Amen. <laughs> Bishop, thank you so much. We could carry on for the yeah, rest of the it's day. True, true. Thank you so much. And thanks for coming back to CBS. It's wonderful to have you back. Thank you for bringing me back. Amen. I'm happy to be here. God bless you so God much. Bless you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Dear friends, thank you so much for joining us today. We are so delighted with uh, your presence and we thank God. Uh, we're grateful again to our bishop for uh, gracing us and uh, we wish you well. And we, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If, if you've really been touched, and I know you have, this is an excellent, excellent message that God has given to us today. I want you to type in the comment section one thing that you want to do better, one thing that you want to improve on, and something that you want to accomplish to the glory of God. And that will be your commitment. Uh, you might ha have it posted so that everyone else can see, but we will know that that's your commitment to radiating the glory of God. And please join us again on Tuesday when we will have the After Sunday Live. Uh, we do know that uh, you have much more that you'd like to hear from uh, Bishop, Bishop Emeritus, David Oginde. He'll be joining us at five o'clock on Tuesday. And then of course on Wednesday, we have our prayer meeting, our corporate prayer, where you can share your prayer requests and anything that the Lord has put on your heart that you want others to stand with you in prayer. That's at six o'clock on Wednesday. We're so grateful today to have had our good friend, uh, Pastor Nigel DeMello, as our moderator. Many, many congratulations to him for continuing to do a good job and for making time to join us again on CBS today. And of course, I know you are blessed by the worship team. Thank you so much, worship team, for a consistently excellent job. You do so well every time we are together. And so, my friends, I hope that you will commit yourself to just write down in the chat section something that God wants you to do better or that you are committing yourself to do better so that you rise above mediocrity, rise above the ordinary. Put it in the chat section. Let us know. And uh, we certainly will be praying for you and rooting for you to succeed in all that you do. 
Thank you so much for being with us again today. It's been a blessing and a pleasure to bring to you the family service right here on CBS and Hope TV. May the Lord truly bless you. Those of you who are watching us online, please share this uh, link of the service as widely as possible to let others hear the excellent message that we received today. And as we prepare to close the series next week on authentic Christian living, uh, looking at these highlights on how we can radiate the glory of God, I hope that you will share this message, that you'll be blessed by it, and that you'll continue to join us again next week. Let's share the closing uh, benediction and uh, share together the words of the grace. If you are in a position to stand, please do stand. And uh, let's uh, share these words together. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.